I have had a few people request a what's in my pack video for day hiking and I've also had lots of questions about what it is I keep in my bag when I'm out doing day hikes. So I thought in this video I'm going to go through exactly what I keep in my day pack when out hiking, especially now that we're transitioning into winter. So this is more of an autumn stroke winter themed video. First things first, the pack I am using is a low alpine air zone one. It is only 18 litres, so I am currently looking for a bigger one. Ideally, I want one that's about 30 litres because I'm finding that when I'm taking off my puffy or my rain clothes, there's just not enough room in it. It's surviving, but I'm definitely needing a new one. So this is just a temporary pack. But first thing on the side is sometimes I will take trekking poles with me. I don't always do this. It depends what type of hike I am doing. If I'm planning on going into the hills or going scrambling, or the terrain's going to be really muddy, slippy or snowy, I will definitely take these out with me. If it's just like a normal country walk, I will tend to leave these at home. They're not always needed, but they do certainly help. I also take with me a seat pad, also known as an asthmat, <laughs> and I love using this, especially when I'm stopping for lunch breaks because it can be very cold and wet sometimes on these hikes. So when you've got one of these, it just keeps you a little bit warmer when you're taking a break. And I also use it to rest my camera on quite a lot of the time so that doesn't get wet. I'm gonna use this right now because this ground is quite muddy. One thing I do not like doing in cold weather is drinking cold water when out hiking and it's still just as important to stay hydrated. So I always find the solution is to take out a hot drink. I always carry something in this hydro flask. It stays hot for about 12 hours. I will normally prefer to take things like a sipping broth out with me. Sometimes tea and coffee, sometimes a hot soup and sometimes a hot vimto. So I always carry a hot drink with me because I just find that it, I don't know, you can just have a couple of sips of it and it just warms you through. Now in the front pocket here, I will always carry my waterproof jacket. So even though I'm wearing a puffy and I usually take that out with me when I'm doing a winter walk, I'll always take a fully waterproof jacket out with me as well. So that usually stays in the front. This one's a Patagonia one. And also in the front, I keep my map. So depending on where I'm hiking, depends on what map I'm taking with me. Now I have a paper map and I usually have a map on my phone as well because I've got the OS Maps app. So I always have that in the front so I can refer to it easily. In the pocket here, which is my side shoulder pocket, I carry some lip balm in there in the front and also my compass, which is a silver compass. The reason why I carry that in the front pocket is first of all, it's easy access if I need it, so I can just get it in and out quite easily. But also the compass has got to stay separate than your mobile phones and power banks. If they touch it, it does mess with the magnetic system somehow. So that's important to keep that separate. In the main part of the pack, I will be keeping all the rest of my gear and it's gonna look like a Mary Poppins bag by the end of this video. It's amazing what you end up fitting in here. So first things first, I have my winter gloves. I've got a couple of pairs of gloves, but these are fully waterproof. The brand is Cirrus, I think it is, Cirrus Extreme Gloves. So these are fully waterproof and extremely warm gloves. I will link as much as I can in the description box below if you want to see what the things are. I also have a buff. Now this one I use as a scarf. You'll often see me wearing buffs around my head as well, but I'll always pack an extra warm one, which is this one, and wear that as a scarf when it's winter. Another thing I always pack is my hat, which I'm wearing because it is really cold today, and my puffy. I always have my sunglasses regardless of the weather. There's nothing that spoils a day worse when you're out hiking and sometimes winter can be worse because you're getting the reflections of the sun off the snow sometimes than squinting all day long because it can also cause headaches as well. That's not pleasant. So I've always got my sunglasses in there too. And this is my extra water bottle. Now this holds one litre of water. If I'm planning on a really long walk or heading off somewhere kind of very remote. What I'll also do is take my soya squeeze and a filter bladder as well so that if I need to get access to more water while I'm out I can do safely but usually just on a day hike where I know where I'm going that is usually enough fluid for me. I also carry this spare dry bag which is a Sea to Summit one and the reason I carry this it's like it acts as a main liner for my bag. Now the bag does have a waterproof cover on it but sometimes when you're in torrential wind and rain it sometimes does 
or can seep through and especially because my bag's quite old so I always take this with me this is as you can see a rather large one and it will fit everything in it's got 20 litre capacity on that one and it's also really good as a make do seat if you forget your seat pad <laughs> Another thing I have is a little purse and this has got all different types of things in here. Now, the first thing I've got is my face mask. I obviously have to carry that with me if I'm going in any shops or on the public transport, anything like that. And sometimes if it's just really busy in a certain area that I'm hiking, I will sometimes wear that as well. I have in here a bag now this is a just a normal bin bag that I use at home for a small bin and I carry that out with me because what I hate to see in nature is tin cans and rubbish and all horrible things that can be damaging to the not only the planet but animals as well so I try and pick up what I can using this bag the only thing I don't pick up is tissues because that's just disgusting but things like cans and general rubbish I do pick up as I go I always carry snack bars. Now these is what I'd probably class as emergency snack bars. So I'll have a cliff bar in here and a naked bar. And I leave these in here as kind of emergencies. But what I will also carry is food for the day. But I'll leave that as separate because that is usually something like um, a homemade bar, some pasta salad things, some sandwiches. It really does depend usually what I've got left over from the night before, but that's a whole nother video. I do take lunch out with me. I usually have fruit as well. Um, and what else do I normally carry with me? Oh, an ISO gel, which is in here. Now I do sometimes get a little bit of low blood sugar and there's no, oh, I hate it when you start getting a bit shaky and you need food quick. So I always carry one of these. This is like an isotonic energy gel. I use these for running and I just always carry one in my bag because it takes away that shaky feeling really quick if you need to get access to food and it's a bit tricky. So that's always in there too. Also in here, I have my bank cards. So I've got my bank cards, I've got cash. I've also got money. So um, change for car parking machines and things like that. And a hair bubble just in case I need a spare one when I'm out. My hair's usually flying all over the place when I'm out hiking. My bag has an internal pocket on the outside of it. And in here, I always keep my sunscreen as well as my head torch. So that's always in the front there. I have another pocket, which is on the very top of my pack. And this is something I can get access to while I'm wearing it. So it's very convenient. In here, I obviously keep my car keys and my Garmin. So this is an in-reach device. I've done a whole nother video on this. So if you are interested in knowing more about that, I will put the link in the description box below and also up here somewhere. But this is a satellite navigation device. So if I get into any tricky situations where I'm out of signal, I have got access to communication via this. And attached to this is a kind of microfiber cloth. It rolls out pretty big. And this is just in case I need to wipe myself down in case I get covered in muck or just need a cloth for any other general reason. And it's fairly big. So that's always in that little pocket there. Also in this top zip, I carry my mobile phone in there as well as some tissues for going to the bathroom and hand sanitizer gel. And that's all in there. Going back into the main section of the bag, I always carry this Osprey dry bag and this is six litres. This never leaves my pack in winter unless I use something in it while I'm out in the field. And then obviously when I get home, I'll replace it and put it back again. So this pretty much stays sealed all the time. And this is something I can dip into in emergencies really. Now, the first thing I've got in here is a extra thermal layer. This is a Patagonia Capeline thermal top. And like I said, it just stays in here because I thought even though I might set off with a thermal top on, a fleece, a puffy, I've got my waterproof coat. If I get into a situation where I get absolutely soaked, I need to have something dry on my top body <laughs> to keep me warm if I get into any bad situations. So that is why I carry that. And also if it is a lot colder than I expect it to be, I've always got it there to hand. What I also keep in here is my Anchor power bank. Now this is to charge up my phone or my Garmin device. I mean, this is always fully charged, but just in case something goes wrong, I have got the two cables in here, one for my phone, one for my Garmin device, and this will see me through for a good number of hours of charge. So I've got that for emergencies. 
I always carry a spare pair of socks. These are some Bridgedale ones and there is nothing worse than cold wet feet. I have been known to just put these on when I get to the car sometimes because I do get wet feet a lot. It's just part of the nature of wearing trail runners a lot of the time. And even when you're wearing boots, you know, there is that chance that your feet might just get too cold. So always carry extra pair of socks. Another thing I carry is this ultralight survival shelter. Now this is by a brand called Life Systems and this is a two person's shelter. So it will do me, my bag and somebody else and a bag. And I don't just carry this for myself. I carry this in case there's anybody else out there in a situation that needs some kind of shelter in extreme weather. Now this isn't just for emergencies. I love this shelter because I have used it not only in a survival situation when I was out doing a navigation course and I was having a little practice with it to see what it's like, but I've used this when it's just been pouring it down and I need to sort my camera gear out or if you just want to have a lunch snack and there's nowhere to, to shelter but you're starving hungry. So you can just quickly pop this up, throw it over yourself and you've created your own microclimate. But I would not be without this, especially when I'm heading out into the hills on my own. If something went wrong, I do not want to get hypothermia and this is just something I think everybody should be having in their backpacks. By the same brand, which is Life Systems, a heat shield thermal bag. Now this is instead of a thermal blanket, like you've probably heard of emergency blankets. I think this kind of goes one step up because it's a bag, so it will fully encase yourself and it's long enough to go over the top of your head as well. So a little bit like a sleeping bag, but not obviously as warm. It does retain about 90% of your body heat, which is incredible and it reflects the cold, it's bright so you can be seen and it's got all the emergency instructions on there. So I would not be without that in the hills as well. Luckily, I've never had to use that. <laughs> And finally in this bag is the first aid kit. Now I have got a lot in this first aid kit, it doesn't look much, but there is an awful lot in here. I shall open it up and go through it, but what I'll probably do is flip them backwards and forwards between some photographs or some video clips of this close up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Now the first thing I've got in here is some hand warmers, so these by a company called Hand Hots and they are so nice to have in your pockets or in your gloves on a cold day and they last up to about eight hours. It says 10 but it's usually about eight hours these last for and it just takes that chill off your hand especially if I'm stood around a lot. These are perfect as well when I'm out doing a bit of photography because it gets very cold when you're standing still. Also in here I have a Swiss army knife with obviously blades on it and scissors, all kinds of different gadgets on here that I use. I have got some kinesiology tape, so some KT tape. I've had some problems with my calves out hiking in the past and I know how painful it can be. So just by carrying this I know I can quickly tape them up if I get into a situation where I'm limping or having some problems just to see me through. I carry a sewing kit and this has got some safety pins and buttons and cotton and needle. Spare shoelace. This is a bit of a strange one, but how many people carry a spare shoelace? If you're out hiking and your shoelace breaks, you are not in for a very comfortable hike for the rest of the day. It can be very annoying and ruin the whole day. So just by carrying a spare shoelace with you, you might save yourself um, a miserable day out. I also carry some Neosporin in here, which is an antibiotic first aid ointment. I also have some medical gloves and a spare face mask. The reason why I carry these, it sounds a bit odd, but if I came across somebody that needed help, that had hurt themselves, I wanted to make sure, especially with the way things are at the moment, that I've got my face mask on, but also it's something for them to wear as well. So that's there. And also surgical gloves, I need to say any more on that one, as well as a lighter. In this side, see what I mean about this first aid kit being huge, I have got extra sunscreen. Now this is a factor 30, so it's higher than the general one I use. So I thought if I get caught out one day, I do have a stronger sunscreen. In here, I've also got some tweezers, spare batteries. So these are some spare batteries for my head torch, which I always make sure I carry because that's really important. I've got some paracetamol. I've also got some migraine tablets. I do suffer from migraines sometimes and that is the worst thing to happen when you're out in the middle of a hike. This is some antihistamine tablets. I've also got some sterile wound cleaning wipes, some burn cool sterile hydrogel, which is burn gel. Plenty of gauzes in here. 
So these are gauze swabs. I've got the 7.5 centimetre by 7.5 centimetres and the five by fives, as well as a whole bandage, which can be used to wrap up a wound or if you sprained your ankle, which I have used in the past. I have microporous tape, which is a breathable tape that's ideal for securing bandages or taping light dressings directly to the skin. An assortment of different sized plasters, as well as some compede, which is specifically for blisters. I have got my waterproof trousers at the bottom, which will fit over all of my trousers that I wear when I'm out hiking as well as some Kalula micro spikes. Now I don't always carry these with me, but these are micro spikes for walking in snow and ice. Now, if I know I'm gonna go out somewhere where it's very cold or I'm at the top of a mountain or somewhere very high, these are invaluable because they stop you slipping all over the place. Finally, included on the bag itself is a whistle. Now this is good enough as a whistle, as an emergency whistle, but obviously if I upgrade my bag and it hasn't got one of those on it, I will get one of those as well for my emergency kit. I hope this video has been helpful and if anybody is out there wondering what they should take with them on a hike, I hope this has given you some kind of base about what to take with you. Obviously everybody's requirements are different and everyone has different preferences and different opinions. This is just what I take with me out on a hike, what I find works well for me. But if you have any comments or suggestions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below, share them with everybody else that's watching. And I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Goodbye.